This is the city, Los Angeles, California. I work here. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Angeles, we were working the day watch out of personnel division, medical section. The boss is Captain Earl Sansing. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. Our activities report to the captain was the last order of business for the day. In five minutes, we'd start our weekend off. should be. I had a busy week. Mm -hmm. Fact is, I've never seen it busier. Two funerals, five serious injuries, and I personally investigated seven restricted duty cases. Yeah, one leave of absence, five blood donor requests, you published the restricted duty list, and you audited the floral fund. What's your point? No point, Joe. I just wanted you to know how busy I was. Oh, I do. You got it all right here in your progress report. Well, don't you have anything else to say? Like what? Joe, you're the officer in charge of this section, right? Right. We've just finished our fifth working day, right? Right. You haven't met your obligation as a supervisor, Joe. Oh, well, how's that? Recognition. An employee is motivated through recognition. Five days now, and you haven't so much as told me I was doing a good job. Did you decide to start studying for sergeant again? Is that it? Thought I'd take a crack at it. What are you studying now? Principles of Leadership by Winslow. Why? I'd say you were on Chapter 3, right? Yeah, employee motivation. How'd you know? Oh, just a wild guess. This is a good report. In fact, it's excellent. I'm sure the captain will think so, too. Just my usual good work, Joe. You bet. And I'm real fortunate to have you working with me. Yeah, I feel the same way. You are fortunate. Well, now, since it's Friday, and just to show my appreciation, we'll knock off now and take the next two days off. How's that? That's real big of you, since we're five minutes over anyway. Medical section, Friday. Where? How bad are they? Anybody else? All right, we'll meet you at Central Receiving. Right away. You can call Eileen from the hospital. You're going to be late for dinner. What's gone down? Two officers and one suspect in a shootout at 7th and Broadway. How bad? They can't tell. Both policemen are unconscious. Bill and I drove to Central Receiving Hospital. In addition to providing emergency service to the public, the hospital cares for all Los Angeles police and firemen injured on duty. 5.15 p.m., we arrived at the hospital prior to the ambulance carrying the two injured officers. Our job was to coordinate with the receiving hospital any problems related to the care of the injured officers, to cause all concerned persons to be notified, and to aid the officers' families as necessary. One of the suspects. How many were there? Two. Where's the other one, downtown? No, he got away clean. Recognize him. Rich Stevens, Central Division. Been on the job 11 months. Frank Miller. I didn't know he was still working a central radio car. I take it you know him. Yeah, the three of us used to work vag detail on East Fifth. That goes back a few years. Yeah, it sure does. Frank broke us both in. Joe, Bill, you on this one? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll let you know as soon as I make the preliminary. Right. What kind of caper was it? Liquor store 211 went down about 5 o'clock. Miller and Stevens were driving by when the suspects came out. Rolling on the call, were they? No call. They were on routine patrol. A citizen hailed them down. According to witnesses, Stevens was shot as the first suspect came out of the liquor store. Miller was able to return fire and hit the suspect. He had the liquor store in background. That's the one we have in custody? Right. Miller didn't have the same luck with number two. He was trying to drag Stevens to cover when the other suspect ran out. He got Stevens out of the way, then tried to get the people on the street out of the line of fire. And that's when number two opened up on him. Witnesses said Miller wouldn't return fire. He kept yelling for the people on the street to get out of the way. The suspect kept shooting at Miller, and Miller started pushing people inside the liquor store and behind cars. 
You can imagine what 7th and Broadway was like at 5 o'clock. Looked like the Battle of the Bulge. Yeah, especially on Friday. Total confusion just leaving work. Is that when Frank bought it? People said he'd been hit a couple of times by then. He kept going, though. Some lady froze on the sidewalk. He ran up and pushed her behind a car. The liquor store owner said the suspect fired three times then and knocked Miller flat. The suspect ran around the corner, and that's the last anybody's seen of him. Any idea who he is? Nope. His partner's not talking. Who's handling at the scene? Homicide shooting team. They were there when I left. Mac, is Stevens married? Yeah, he has two small children. Okay. We'll make the rest of the notifications, except for the wives. That has to be done in person. You know that. Mac, you drop by juvenile. Pick up a policewoman to babysit the Stevens children. Now, when you bring Mrs. Stevens down here, bring it to her easy, will you? We don't know anything about their men's condition, so let's be optimistic, huh? Right. I'll make the rest of the notifications. And get Central on the phone. Arrange to have a sergeant pick up Frank Miller's wife. Check the flow. Vital signs every 15 minutes. How they doing? It's a little too early to tell exactly. Miller was hit five times. There are only two exit wounds, so there's still three slugs inside that have to come out. His right lung collapsed. There's evidence of other internal bleeding. We'll know more after x-rays. How about Stevens? Shot twice in the abdomen, both still inside. Same story with him. We have to get x-rays. We've done just about all we can here. Preliminary treatment, blood plasma, and some bandages. How would you classify their conditions, Doc? Serious? Critical? I won't hazard a guess at this point, Joe, for what they've been through, and judging from preliminary tests, they're doing better than one could expect. A bullet does crazy things when it hits a man's body. It can go straight as an arrow, it can shatter or bounce all over inside. When we see the x-rays, I'll have a better idea of the kind of surgery they're gonna need. Do you have the wives coming in? Yes, sir. Should be here any time now. And you're wondering what to tell them? No, Doc. Like every other time, not so much what, but how. I've been at this for 39 years. I don't have an answer for you, Joe. said $18. That's what these uniform shirts cost now. Yeah, so I've heard. A real cut up. No chance of having them sewn. Just gonna have to buy new shirts, Joe. I hope they do. What's his condition? Bullet wound, right thigh, through and through. He's been treated. Cleanse, dress, and a tetanus shot. That's it. You booking him in? Jail ward at County General. Hear that, cop? A week or two, I'll be brand new. Find out who he is yet? Yeah, I'll name Schaffner. Lawrence Schaffner. He's been around. He's done hard time at Leavenworth, two years at Chino, and his last stint was in San Quentin for armed robbery. You carrying a tail, fella? No tail, cop. I did it all. I don't like those parole jerks following me around. They get in my way. What about his partner? That's for me to know, cop. You'll never find out who he is. I'll see to that. You can't stand it, can you? We got a good piece of a couple of you pigs, and you got nothing. You should have seen the look on that cop's face when I popped those caps. He squirmed like a pig. You're real proud of yourself, aren't you, Schaffner? You can bet on it, cop. You know, one thing I can't figure, this loyalty angle of yours, you just gotta protect that other creep, don't you? I'm no fink. Besides, you do the same for me. Oh, he already proved that, didn't he? Sure. Sure, like leaving you bleeding on the sidewalk. <laughs> At 5.50 p.m., the wife of Officer Frank Miller was brought to the hospital. The staff made the nurse's coffee room available for our use. Virginia Miller was a veteran wife of a veteran policeman. Oh, thank you. Is there anything else you can tell me? No, ma'am. We've just about covered it. We'll have to wait until they get out of x-ray before we know any more. They? You mean Frank wasn't the only one hurt? I'm sorry. I didn't realize you hadn't been told. His partner was shot twice. They're both in x-ray now. Oh, no. Who was he working with? A probationary officer by the name of Stevens. Rich Stevens? Yes, ma'am. You know him? No, I've never met him before, but Frank talks about him all the time. In fact, he talks about all the young ones he breaks in. He said Rich was a real comer, to use his words. How much time does Frank have on the job now, Mrs. Miller? 23 years. 
That sounds like a long time. But it seems like it was only yesterday I watched Frank graduate from the academy. I was carrying our oldest son, Kenneth, then. Joe, this is Mrs. Stevens. Sergeant Friday, Officer Gannon. How do you do? Thank you, Mac. Ms. Stevens, I'd like you to meet Virginia Miller. This is Officer Frank Where's Miller. Where's Rich? I want to see him. I'm afraid that's not possible now, ma'am. They're both in x-ray. It shouldn't be long before we know. Know what? Whether he's going to live or die? Wouldn't you like to sit down, Mr. No, I wouldn't like to sit down. Now, Mrs. Stevens, we don't know much about your husband's condition yet. That's what those x-rays are for. As soon as we find out, you'll be told right away. I knew something like this would happen. I just knew it. I told Rich, but he wouldn't listen. I didn't want him to join the police department in the first place. I told him it was too dangerous. I told him. Mrs. Stevens, sometimes these things just happen. Oh, sure they happen. To people that are stupid or childish enough to be policemen. Didn't have to, you know. My father offered him a good job, twice the money he's making now. But oh, no. He was too proud for that. He had to make it his own way. Couldn't take a decent job like most. I hardly ever see him between going to work and going to court. The children think he's a stranger. I know what you're going through, Mrs. Stevens. Try to take it easy if you can. What do you know? Do you sit at home? Do you have to take care of the children by yourself? Don't try to tell me to take it easy. Look at us, all waiting in here, not knowing. Is that the kind of life to lead? Never knowing? Waiting? Waiting to know whether your husband's going to live or die? You take it easy, Mr. Policeman. It's not your life that's coming to an end on that operating table. <laughs> Six twenty p.m. The X-ray examinations were complete. We were called for a briefing. Doctor C. Harry Lindsley was in charge of the case. Gunshot wounds were not new to him. His tenure with Central Receiving Hospital as the police and fire physician amounted to more gunshot cases than any five surgeons would see in a lifetime. They're both being prepared for surgery now. How serious are they, Doc? Let me show you the X-rays. This is a younger officer, Stevens. Now, as I told you before, he still has two slugs in him. One here, one here. I'm sure this first bullet did quite a bit of internal damage. The path, judging from the entrance wound and the termination point, indicates that we probably have damage to the upper part of the transverse colon, the stomach, and where it appears to have ended up, the liver. That's the first one we'll work on. Where was the entrance wound? Right about here, midpoint in the rib cage. Apparently, that was the first shot that struck him, and the force must have spun him around. Why do you think that? Because of the other entrance wound. It was in the lower part of his back at an angle. The bullet traveled across his back and lodged right here between two of the lumbar vertebra. I've called in a specialist for consultation and surgery. If the spinal cord isn't already damaged, the surgery will be touch and go. And if it is? If it's damaged and if he survives surgery, he'll be permanently paralyzed. Now, Frank Miller. Five entrance wounds. Two in the upper chest, one in the abdomen, one in the throat, one in his left shoulder. The throat and shoulder wounds were through and through. The trachea has been damaged. We've already performed a tracheotomy. But to make matters worse, his right lung has collapsed from one of the chest wounds. So far, we've been able to keep him breathing. The other two wounds have caused severe internal bleeding. One bullet's very close to his heart. He lost a lot of blood. His resistance is dropping. I've also called in a specialist for him. Can you speculate on their chances, Doc? Right now, the odds are against both of them. A lot depends on how they stand up in surgery. They're both in deep shock. That contributes to the impairment of the nervous system's control over the muscular arteries. Those arteries influence the amount of blood flowing to organs and are vital to the body. That control is impaired in shock and can cause circulatory failure. I'm sure you can see what we're up against. Their injuries are numerous and have caused many side effects. So like I said, surgery and the initial recovery period will tell the story. Doesn't sound too encouraging, does it? No, it doesn't. I've been digging bullets out of policemen for a long time, Bill. Yes, sir. These two are as bad as I've seen. Six thirty p.m. Bill and I went to the nurse's coffee room to inform Virginia Miller and Melissa Stevens of their husband's conditions. The poor thing, just exhausted herself. The nurse gave her something to quiet her down. How's she feeling now? A little better. I think the only thing that's keeping her going is her bitterness toward the department. She refused to lie down in one of the rooms. How are you feeling, Miss Miller? Trying to stay optimistic. I called my son Kenneth, but he'd already gone to work. 
I guess he'll find out when he gets there. I imagine the word's all over the department by now anyway. Ma'am? My son. He's been a policeman for about a year now. With L.A.? Naturally. Kenneth made his own decision when he graduated from college. Starting a family tradition, huh? We are. And when those two get together, all they do is talk shop. I can't get a word in edgewise. But you're not here to talk about that, are you? We have the results on the x-rays. Both men are in surgery now. Just a minute. She should know. Melissa. Come on, honey, wake up. Rich? Rich, you all right? Melissa. Wake up, honey. Melissa? Huh? What's the matter? Something happened? Sergeant Friday and Officer Gannon are here. They want to give us the x-ray results. Oh, I'm so sorry. I must have fallen asleep. Are you all right now? Yes, yes, I'm all right. Before they tell us, I'd like you to listen to me for a minute, okay? I was married to Frank before he joined the police department. And I've been with him the whole 23 years he's been a policeman. Is that supposed to be something to be proud of? Well, in my own way, I'm proud, yes. Not just because he's a policeman, but because he's happy. Before Frank joined the department, he worked for an accountant. He was miserable most of the time. And the reason he was was because he felt useless, like he wasn't doing anything really worthwhile. After being on the job for a few years, he became eligible for the sergeant's examination. And that's when I really learned how satisfied he was with what he was doing. He didn't take that examination, or any sense. Frank believed he was making an important contribution doing exactly what he was doing. Oh, sure, the job has its ups and downs. There were good days when things went right, and a lot of bad ones when he saw things you and I would never see in a lifetime. I'll never forget the time he found a little 10-year-old boy who had been missing for two days. Well, that boy had welts all over his back and arms. And the reason the child ran away from home was because his father beat him and his mother did nothing to stop it. You know what Frank said when it was over? He said, thank God there's somebody around to protect an innocent child. It makes everything else worthwhile. That's a great part of what my job's all about. Oh, don't you see, Melissa? Your husband, my husband. They have more than just a job. They're making a contribution, and they feel it. That's important to a man, Melissa, very important, to feel he's making a contribution. From what I've seen in my husband, it's a good feeling. He's happy, and I'm a part of that happiness. Tell me something, Mrs. Miller. Are you happy now? I know that Frank was doing what he had to do. I wish I could feel that way, Mrs. Miller, but I just can't. I hate everything about his job. And now look what it's done to him. Is that what you call making a contribution? Being shot down in the street by some filthy animal? And what am I supposed to do? Find satisfaction in this great contribution while he could very well be dying? You might do what I've been doing, Melissa. What's that? Praying. Mrs. Miller, I started praying the day Rich took this job. What good has it done? Six forty-five p.m. After informing the wives of their husbands' conditions, we called the parish house at the request of Virginia Miller. She wanted a priest. Six fifty-five p.m. The officers had been in surgery for twenty-five minutes. In line with normal procedure, I called the chief of police to give him a progress report. 7 p.m., Father George Thomas arrived from the parish house. We informed him of the circumstances. He agreed to remain with the wives until the completion of surgery. 8.30 p.m., both officers were still undergoing surgery. 8.45 p.m., the homicide team assigned to the case checked in. The second suspect was still outstanding. They had no leads. 9.15 p.m., surgery continued. We checked in on the wives. Any word? Not yet, Father. They're still in surgery. Been a long wait. How are the women? As well as can be expected. Mrs. Stevens has settled down considerably. I hope she has the faith and courage to carry her through. Have you been able to talk with her? With the aid of Mrs. Miller. I pray we've given her at least a thread to hang on to. Yes, sir. It's not very much, is it? Thread?
Sergeant Friday wanted in recovery. Sergeant Friday wanted in recovery. 9.25 p.m. The surgery on the two officers had been completed. We waited for the results. Mrs. Stevens, your husband's going to be fine. No damage to the spinal cord. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Recovery room two. Frank had a tough go. He's critical. Room one. He's come with us. Frank. Oh, Frank. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, may the Lord forgive you by this holy anointing whatever sin you have committed. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth, earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Sergeant Friday, Officer Gannon, I want to apologize about the way I acted today. That's all right, Miss Stevens. We understand. He looks fine. First thing he wanted to know is if they caught the other suspect. Can you be all right? Frank's dead. I'm so sorry. I'm glad Rich is going to be all right, Melissa. You take care of him. You understand? You love him like you've never loved him before. Ken. Oh, son. <laughs> seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On November 20th, trial was held in Department 50, Superior Court of the State of California for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspect was found guilty of murder in the first degree, which is punishable by death or confinement in the state prison for life. Lawrence Schaffner refused to disclose the identity of the second suspect, who is still at large. The Los Angeles Police Department posthumously awarded its highest honor, the Medal of Valor, to Officer Frank Miller for distinguished and conspicuous bravery. The award was presented to his widow.